bugs, they're a nuisance in every garden. But have you ever noticed that some plants have a natural insect repelling ability? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use nettles and molasses to make fermented plant juice and use this to keep bugs from eating your tomatoes or whatever it is you might be growing. Hi, I'm Christina with Forever Food Forest, a channel where I explore ways of growing food without the use of herbicides, pesticides, or commercial fertilizers. And instead I rely on permaculture gardening principles and other natural farming techniques to grow food. Both nettles and molasses have natural insect repelling properties. And by fermenting the two, we are also going to cultivate a lot of beneficial bacteria that are going to improve the health of our soil. And healthy soil means healthy plants. And healthy plants do not taste good to insects. So to get started, we're gonna need our nettles, molasses, or brown sugar, a jar, something to use as a weight. I'm using a kombucha bottle, but you can use a rock, a bowl to mix everything in, and gloves. If you have a scale, it's nice, but you can always just eyeball it. And you want to gather your nettles first thing in the morning when the leaves are still covered in dew and full of energy. And you also want to wear gloves because they are stinging nettles and they're called that because they have these tiny little needles that are full of those magical insect repelling properties. Today I'm gathering young shoots and new leaves. Uh, stems like this that have already gone into flower mode are going to have different types of hormones. And if I were to use them on my new seedlings, they might stimulate them to start flowering early. Now that I have my nettles, I'm going to weigh them. 123 grams. And we want to use the same amount of molasses um, as the dry plant matter that we have. So around one to one ratio, 121 grams, close enough. Now we just want to make sure that all that plant matter is nicely covered like a beautiful salad for our garden. And now we're just going to pack this jar full of our plant material. We are using the power of osmosis to draw out the water and nutrients in the plant leaves. And since I don't have a rock to weigh this down, I have this kombucha bottle filled with water. And you can also use like a fermentation weight if you have one. And you want to ferment it for about eight to 10 days. So three days have passed since I last put these away. And let's see if our fermented plant juice is fermenting. It's got some juice on the bottom and there's a lot of white mold here. Interesting. Oh, even more white mold. But there is some juice on the bottom. Let's... It smells really nice. Lovely, lovely scent. Uh, almost medicinal. I would drink this if it didn't have all that mold in it. Okay, so this is day four. I reached out to someone who knows a little bit more about this than I do to see if the mold was normal, and I am told that this needs to be weighed down a little bit more. So let's smush it down so that the plant material is in the juice. All right, so now that all the plant material is submerged, we're just gonna let it ferment for Saturday, Sunday, Monday. After 10 days, we're gonna separate our solids from our liquid using a strainer. And this is what it looks like once it is strained. I really should have used more nettles, but this stuff is super concentrated, so it's enough to get us started for the season. And then I can always make more later. This I can compost or extract further using apple cider vinegar. And now I'm gonna show you how we dilute this. We diluted one part fermented plant juice to 500 parts water. Uh, it's a super dilute solution, and then you can adjust it depending on your plant needs. So to give you a visual how much you want to dilute it, here we're going to get a quarter teaspoon of our fermented plant juice, which is approximately one milliliter. This is 500 milliliters of water. Okay. 
It's a good starting point. You can always adjust as needed. Remember, a little bit goes a long way, and there is a point of diminishing returns where more does not equal better results. Fermented plants juice can be used many different ways in the garden. You can use it as a soil drench, as a leaf spray. You can also spray it on top of your compost pile to improve the microbial biodiversity. And this stuff works best as a preventative, so I start using it as a soil drench about a week before my seeds are in the ground, and then every two weeks thereafter until my plants are established. It also works really well if you are transplanting at helping to minimize that transplant shock and helping plants establish faster. So you're probably wondering, but does it actually work? I need to see concrete results. Guess what? I got you. Three days ago, I found a plant that was in need of some kind of pest control. It was this fire bush and it was infested with aphids. I used fermented plant juice as a soil drench just to see if anything would happen. And now it's three days later. Let's take a look at the leaves. There's still some aphids, but it is doing tremendously better. So here's another example with this pepper plant. About a week ago, I noticed that it was losing color. The leaves were turning yellow and rusty. So I applied fermented plant juice as a spray or a foliar feed to some of the leaves. And as you can see where I applied it, the color is returning because nettles are so full of nutrients. They can be used as a foliar feed fertilizer to correct any nutrient imbalances in your plants. And healthy plants are not tasty to insects. Remember, this works best at preventing pests from nibbling on your plants as part of a holistic approach to gardening. If you already have an infestation, you need to take a step back and figure out what is causing your plant to be stressed. Stressed plants attract pests. Are they dehydrated? Is it too hot? Is it too dry? Are they not getting enough sun? Do you have too much nitrogen in the soil? All of these could be causes for pests. So once you can diagnose what is the problem that's causing your plants to be stressed and you solve it, you're well on your way to getting rid of that infestation. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. If you tried this, if you do try it, let me know how it works out for you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.